All right, guys, today we got a brand new tool that's out. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Let's get into it. Here's a scenario. You get a vehicle that comes in. It's a GDI vehicle. It's got a misfire. You've eliminated engine mechanical. You've eliminated your ignition. So it's not spark plug. It's not a coil. What's your next step? You're going to throw an injector in it and hope for the best with this tool. And that's what we've had to do from, you know, so, you know, so far, that's our only option. Really. We've had no way to actually test these injectors and know, are they dropping fuel or not? But now we can, we have got something here from automotive diag. We've kind of affectionately call it the Addy. So, and we actually have Scott here from Automotive Diag. He and his daughter came in from St. Louis or from Jefferson. Jefferson City, Missouri. Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm sorry. So <laughs> he's come in to kind of walk me through these things and show me what they can do. And I will tell you right now. So we, just to kind of give you a real teaser right now, we've got him hooked up to a vehicle that has no problem. This vehicle came in here for an airbag issue. No engine problem whatsoever. And we found a problem, a potential future problem with this vehicle. So we're going to show you that in just a minute. So Scott, you make these things in your, in your garage. We build each one by hand. They, they take about six hours each. And yeah, it's been a huge undertaking. Um, and, and really how this came about is I misdiagnosed a car and it, it, I tried to do something that had been done in the past that we used to do and all of a sudden I realized well you know on these newer GDI systems some of the old testing methods don't work so I'm like well there has to be a way to do this uh, these days so I ended up with this solution. With so this you were tool. telling me that you so we used to do what we had uh, you know for those of you that have been using scopes for a long time and pressure transducers you used to be able to take a pressure transducer and put it on the fuel rail and you used to be able to watch the fuel. We could do it with a, with a, I mean, we have lots of different things. You could right. do it with you a first look. You could do it with a, any kind of pressure you transducer or, or, you know, or, or on the pressure regulator. Even. Yeah. 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 So. And, and you used to be able to see them drop. And if they physically drop the fuel, then you would see it, you know, the pressure drop. Right. But you can't do that with a GDI engine. The, the, the problem with the GDI engine, there's, there's no way to get any kind of pressure sensor. I mean, it's super high pressure and there's no way to get to it. But ingeniously, these things do have a pressure sensor on the fuel rails. I mean, the engine computer has to know what kind of fuel pressure is in that fuel rail. So Scott came up with a way of reading that pressure sensor and amplifying the signal so we can look at it on a scope and we can see how much of a drop every injector gives us. So. Let's, let's get this car fired up. So we've got two of them on this car. You do not need two of them. But we are on a car that's not broken and we were kind of wanting to see, we're, we saw an anomaly that we were like, ooh, maybe that's something and it is something. So we hooked up a second one and I'll show you what that one does because that's even, they're both the same unit, but we are able to look at two different signals that we can't usually look at like this. Let's get this one fired up. We're gonna show you on the scope. Just wanna prove to you guys real quick, we hooked up a scanner once we saw this we were like because it's here for an airbag issue we hooked it up went in the engine module there's no codes in the engine module we went into the misfire data there's no misfires on this engine whatsoever so we've got let me tell you what we've got hooked up so the one that we're that we really are looking at when we're looking at this fuel pressure drop we've got this one hooked up to the signal wire on the fuel rail pressure sensor. So the fuel rail pressure sensor is under here. We're at a connector and that's what that, that's what that one's hooked up to down here. Now this is hooked up around the number one injector uh, driver wire. And we just wanted this as a sink because when we look at this on a scope, we need to know if we're trying to pick out a bad injector, we need to have a reference from which one's what, right? So that's what the amp clamp is. It's just going to give us, that's number one injector firing. Okay, so that's the thing that you're going to use pretty much when you've got a misfire, you've got a broken car, that's the two connections you're going to make, and, and you're going to have your answers, you're going to have the data you need to make a decision, right? Now, in this case, because we saw an anomaly, we went ahead and hooked up a second one, and we've got this connected to the crank sensor, and we're just at the engine control module and we're just getting a crank sensor signal. Now you're saying, well, why do I need to have this for the crank sensor signal? The way we're looking at the crank sensor signal is we're looking at the speed 
This is going to take this crank, and if I say something wrong, Scott, make okay. sure you correct yeah, me. you're doing great. We're gonna take in the crank sensor signal uh, from the crank sensor itself, and this is going to calculate the speed of the crank sensor, and if, it sh if the crank sensor speeds up or slows down, our, our pattern is gonna get a little taller or a little, a little shorter, right? Basically, yeah. Okay, and then we've got our, just because we wanted to have an ignition sink, we stuck an ECOP on here, now we have an ignition sink. So now we've got crank speed and we've got an ignition sink. We've got fuel rail pressure. We can watch it drop and we've got the injector sink. So we'll, we'll show you all that on the scope and we've got the data pulled up, but let's go ahead and get some fresh data on here. Let's go over everything that we've got on the screen here. So I know that looks really busy, but let's just blow it up a little bit and I'm just gonna move the green one up and then we'll go over everything. So very Christmassy colors there, it's close to Christmas. All right, so our red is our, is our uh, amperage for our number one injector. So when you see the red, that means the number one injector fired. Our green is when our number one coil fired, ignition coil fired. Our white is going to be our, our crankshaft sensor speed. It's not the crankshaft sensor signal, it's the crankshaft sensor speed. So when you see that getting higher and lower, so you can see that that's a little higher than that one. You know, if we just kind of pan through here a little bit, whoops, if we pan through here just a little bit. Maybe we'll see some more that are a little obvious. There you go. So you can see that. It's actually not doing it as bad right now. Yeah, that one is a little lower. This thing will get where it gets really, really, you'll see it big time. We're gonna see it on these, but let's go, just so you see that, number, that, that one is picking up speed. It's not the sensor, so that's the white one. And then the yellow one, that's the money one. That's the one that's gonna show us our, our drops in our fuel rail pressure, in our fuel rail. I mean, it's basically this is showing when the fuel pressure drops in the fuel rail, you're gonna see that drop. So let me just turn a lot of these off to give it a lot of cleaner look. So we can see that right here, that number one, injector fired and this is the fuel rail drop the pressure in the fuel rail dropped on number one this is one three four and then two would be somewhere in here and we can see that it's didn't drop right it didn't drop as much so let's see because that's that's the problem that we're having that we see on this vehicle so since we're looking right at it let's go ahead and put on the crankshaft and then let's back out just a little bit. All right. And we're not seeing it on that one. So we can see that that, again, I know this is getting really busy and it's difficult, but we can see that didn't um, drop as much. But if we go to, let's see where number two. So here is, let me see here, where are we at? One, three, four, two. So our, we're gonna count this one, right? So we're gonna count from, let me show you guys where we're counting from, I don't want you to get lost. This is our coil firing. So this is one, this is three, this is four, and this is two, right? So we can see that this number two correlates to this drop in this injector, right? So this drop fuel at this point, and this was the resulting engine speed. I hope that makes sense. And, it, and it, this is a vehicle that's not broken, guys. We can see that that we can see that that dropped. Now, if we come, I just dropped the cursors down there. You can see where this one is considerably lower than that one. It's lower than that one. It's lower than that one. It, it might be just a touch, maybe equal with that one, a little bit lower. But it's definitely lower, and that on that on those, uh, you know, in in uh, relation to those different. But we had seen Speed. issues on three sometimes on this we car did. too. Yes. So, so between three and two, they both have issues yep. at times. So we've seen issues with this one and with this one, right? So let's look at this real quick. Let's go back. So if we go back, we can we can again. We've got to look at when did when did the fuel fire to do that one? Well, we're going to come over to our previous uh, fuel drop, right? Which is mm -hmm. going to be 
It's gonna be here. This one doesn't look crazy. It'd be right. It should be this one. Yeah, it's gonna be this one. It should be that one. That one doesn't look too crazy right this second. Yeah, but so it that, could be an atomization thing. I mean, if it's yeah. right on the hairy edge. So again, we're looking at a non-broken car here. Let's pan through here. Oops. I'm trying to. The pen is being a little difficult. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can't find one that's a little more. All right, so let's just take a look at this one because that's really low and that's going to be number three again. Mm -hmm. So because here's number one, three, four, two. Again, look at number three and look at number two. Again, we've got our, our ignition fired. So this is number one, number three, number four, number two. And now where does this number three come from? Well, we've got to go back over to this uh, injector firing, and then we got count from there. One, three, four, two, right? Well, look at that number three dropped a lot of fuel. So that dropped too much fuel. And then look at our number two, right? So our number two is right here. And look how much fuel it dropped, and look what it did to that, right? So, I mean, you can clearly see where there's a correlation between the fuel drop and the and these in the crankshaft speed and this is a this is not a broken car right we're seeing issues with this vehicle on cylinder number three and cylinder number two and we're seeing them over i mean we've done this test now probably four or five times where we run it and you know, we're just playing around looking right. at stuff and getting some you know known goods even though this is a known good it's kind of a bad right because we're seeing some issues here so i guess my point is if we're if we're able to see, and I know this looks busy, and when I first saw it, when you first came in and we first popped out there, I'm like, well, that's a lot of stuff going on. But after you watch it for a while, after we've only been working on this thing, what, a couple, three hours, Something right? Like that, yeah. And after, you know, looking at it a few times over and over and over again, it's like, oh, well, this is actually pretty easy to see these. There's the drop in the injector. There's the, and there's the corresponding, um, you know, crankshaft speed correlation. Contrib contribution. Contributions, yeah. you know. And so, Imagine this on a broken vehicle. You get this vehicle that comes in here and it's sitting here going but running rough, running bad, right? And the injector's not dropping much at all. This is gonna stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, this thing is gonna have an injector that's even just, that's, that's just pouring fuel, over fueling, right? Or it's just gonna be hardly doing anything at all. And you're gonna see it so clear. And I have tried, so when, when, Scott came in and hooked that up and we're putting this stuff on there. I'm like, well, you know what? I want to see if we can just go straight into that fuel rail pressure sensor because, you know, the ATS scope has got a much better resolution than any scope out there, right? So it's a 16-bit scope. So it's got the highest resolution of any scope. So vertical resolution. So if there is a way to see these dropouts, this is the scope that's going to do it. And this, we could not see it on here. We could see a little bit Somewhat. of a... Light a little bit of a where it went up where it rebounded mm -hmm. but we couldn't see the drop so it really didn't have the information we needed to diagnose the fuel injector whereas what this did is this takes in that signal and cleans it and amplifies it so we get a much more useful well a useful signal a useful because we don't have a useful signal other than that now the crankshaft speed we can get so let's say that you're looking you're trying to determine what cylinder is misfiring okay and, and you want to do that with crankshaft speed. Now, on, I will tell you without question, on ATS, if we just wanted to use the crankshaft speed as a, you know, to determine what cylinder was misfiring, the ATS has got that software built into it. You just hook it into the crank sensor, you run it, and it'll, it, you know, you hook up the one sink, and you got the, you've got the misfiring cylinder. Where this, though, allows us to see, if we had two of them, which you don't need two of them, but if you wanted to do this experiment and play around, you get two of them, and you can get both those things going on the screen at the same time. Uh, Pico will also do, you can use the math channels, and you can figure out a misfiring cylinder. But I'll be honest with you, I've done that. It's not fun to do. I mean, we're all here to try to fix cars. We're trying to get in, try to get out, right? This is connecting into a, into a wire, going into a fuel rail pressure sensor. This is getting an amp clamp around one wire. And really, that's all we really need, because if the thing's sitting there running bad, we're gonna see it. I mean, we're gonna see it in less than a minute. I know you've seen a lot of broken cars, I, I take it, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty obvious when you sit yeah, them on the screen? Yeah, yeah, yep. absolutely. And it's just a matter of seeing that, just that it's not dropping, right? Yep, just that difference in drop. So, and now, so that's, to me, that thing will make it, you know, will pay for itself. Realistically, if you put, if you did one injector job and it didn't fix the car, or, or 
you've got a misfire on number, just throwing this out there. We've got a misfire. Let's just say this car comes in. It's got a misfire on number two. That seems to be the one that's the most common on this, right here on this, watching this pattern. Number two seems to be really happening a lot. This car comes in. At some point, this car will have a misfire on number two because of that appeal injector, right? So this car comes in with a misfire on number two, and you go, oh, hey, yep. It's not the spark plugs. It's not the coils. There's nothing wrong with the engine itself. It's got a bad number two injector. You put number two injector in it, right? It goes down the road. Two months later, it comes back and it's misfiring again. What's the client going to say? This is the words are going to, you're going to hear. Doing the exactly the same thing, right? Now you're going back in it. You're diagnosing it for free. You're finding another bad injector. Then you're going back and going, hey, it's, it's another bad injector. I don't know. Maybe you'll get paid for the diagnostics. Maybe you won't. But it's not, you're probably giving away something because the person is going to be, you know, rightfully so. They, th they don't know what we're doing in here, right? They, they, they're going to think, oh, well, it's the same feeling, right? It's doing the same thing. With this, we can clearly see number three is an issue too. So if you hook this up to a car and you've got number two cylinder misfire, you're looking at all four of them and you go, hey, number one and number four look really clean. They look really good. But number three looks a little marginal. Now maybe you say, hey, let's get number one or number two in there to fix it. Let's put number three in there to make sure we don't have a problem down the road, right? So just in doing that, saving you from from costing you money right and making you a little bit of money by putting the other injector in there you've paid for this thing pretty much in one job that's one part of what this tool will do there's some other features that it has and some other tests that it can run on some different sensors and things we're going to use it later we're definitely putting this tool into use you will see it in future videos because i think this thing is going to really help us out to diagnose cars we'll definitely show you this one on a broken car and we'll show you some other features that it has but let's bring scott in here real quick so scott you you make these things so you're gonna you make them and ship them out right mm -hmm. as they're ordered. Yeah. Um, how much are they? Everybody's gonna want to know right uh, now. They're nine ninety nine. So nine hundred ninety nine dollars, right? And how long does it normally take you to get one out? Because I know um, you gotta make them. Well, I my turn time's been about six weeks is what I've been running lately. Okay. So. So if you need to get it, so and what's the site they need to go to? Uh, to www.automotivediag.com. Automotivediag.com. So I'm gonna tell you right now that for us. This tool is going in the arsenal 100%. I mean, this tool, I think, is just ingenious the way that you've designed this thing. And you built this thing. You designed it and built it. This is you. Yep. I love that, guys. I mean, this is a... And you're just a mechanic, right? Yep. You're, you're just a tech. Just a tech. I say just a mechanic. You yep. know what I mean? Hey, this is what we do, right? It's we fix we, things, right? That's all we've done for years. We just solve problems. That's and it. Sometimes we find a problem and find a way to solve it. There it is. So. I mean, and this is ingenious. We're super grateful for Scott to come down here, brought his daughter down here and showed us this tool and and you know we bought this tool just so you guys know we bought this tool and this is not a sponsored video we just want to show you guys tools that can help your life be easier as a mechanic in the in the bays turn and burn and make some money so appreciate you guys watching hope you like this if you did you know what to do hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button hit that bell notification and leave a comment down below we appreciate you watching we'll see you in the next one